Right. Hey guys, it is Chris with Nichols Retirement Empire. I'm going to make a video today I've been wanting to make for a while, um, and it has to do with float rigs. Uh, they're, they're called all kind of different names. They're called float rigs, slip bobbers, whatever you call it. That's, you know, that's fine. They're all the same thing, but I'm going to give you six float rig tips that I think are, it's really going to help you. Now, this applies to if you've lived here your whole life on the Southeast coast, uh, or, or if you've just moved. When I got ready to move here and I did a little research on how people fished here and I found out that the slip bobber or the float rig was uh, pretty much the staple. I learned a few things and it was all pretty basic. I didn't get into any kind of detail that really was going to help me. And since I've lived here about a year and a half, I have really picked up a lot of, of, of tips and information just from my experience. Uh, not so much necessarily from other people, but from going out there and doing it. And uh, if you live somewhere else, you can apply a lot of these things, uh, a lot of these principles. But this really, really works down here where we have this big, heavy current and, and, and big tides uh, on the southeast coast of the United States. You know, we may have a, a six foot up to eight foot tide, you know, on any given day, twice a day. There's always current. All right, the first thing, the first tip, tip number one, you're gonna like this one. Tip number one is relax. Relax, Francis. <laughs> it's, there is not just one way to do this. Don't get up tight uh, about and, and fixated about the way that you float. I talked to a guy that lives that's lived here his whole life, you know, a couple weeks ago, and he told me that uh, he said, you know what? He said, I, I don't catch fish the way I used to. And I have made my float rig and done it the same way my entire life and I have never changed. And uh, some people, when they get the idea that, that there's a different way to do things, it kind of makes them upset. They're like, no, 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 I'm, I'm, you know, they're fixed in their ways. Don't be fixed in your ways. You know, be willing to learn, be willing to change. You know, a lot of the new ideas are good. And sometimes they'll come from people that don't have experience where you fish. They don't know any better. Like I've seen a lot of people, I'll watch them and I'll think, man, that guy don't have a clue what he's doing. And he'll catch fish. And I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll think, why is he, you know, I thought I had the, you know, monopoly on, I thought I knew everything and I don't. Uh, if you are afraid to do that, then there's no reason to watch the rest of this video because I'm going to tell you some things that might be different than what you do. So, because I don't know any better. I've only been here a year and a half. And so I came into it fresh and I've learned a lot of stuff. Next, tip number two, you need to use the right float. Um, now, I've tried a lot of different floats. I've tried the Billy Bay floats with the with the arms. Um, I've tried just a regular old Walmart, you know, cheap, you know, little dollar float. Uh, I've tried the uh, Thill floats. Uh, the only float I have not tried are those real long white, orange, and yellow ones that a lot of people, you know, on the on the on the southeast coast use. Uh, I haven't tried those. The ones that I like the most, and I'll show you, I, I, I order these on the internet. Uh, these are Bow Mac. It really doesn't matter what the brand is, but these are EVA floats. It's a foam type material, um, and this stuff lasts for forever. And I like it because of a couple of things. For one, uh, it's really, really bright. It either has the yellow or orange top. It's really easy to see, very easy to see. I like the way it sits in the water. Uh, I can tell when I get a bite really easy. I like that these tell you, like this one is a half ounce float, which means I can put a half ounce weight. And if I put a half ounce weight, then it's going to sit straight up. Because when I'm out there fishing and I'm grabbing floats and I'm grabbing weights, it, it's hard sometimes to, you know, is this the right? If I put the wrong size weight, then this, this float's not going to sit straight up. That's going to be a problem. We'll talk about that later. But um, I like it because it says it right on it. Some of the other floats do not tell you what the weight size is. You're just supposed to know or you're just supposed to figure it out. I don't want to figure it out. I'd rather just know. This one, I've had this for a year and a half. I've used this float for a year and a half. There's nothing on that float that can tear up. Uh, I've only lost maybe two or three floats in a year and a half. Uh, now there, are, these are a little expensive, a little more expensive than some of the other kinds, but they last forever. And if you tie your rig right, 
you're going to be able to keep that float a long, long time. So, it, but it really doesn't matter what kind of, you use any kind of float you want, whatever you're comfortable with, but I can see those. Um, and I like, you know, I like those features about it. Tip number three, uh, rig it right. Now I'm going to show you how I rig up my, um, my float rigs. And I picked up part of this from a, a channel out of uh, Jacksonville, Captain Dave's Sport Fishing or whatever. I think is the name of his channel, but, and I really like this. And this is why I don't lose many floats. All right. The first thing is you can use Either you can buy these little bobber stoppers that you can get at Walmart, wherever, your local tackle store. They all carry these. Or like this, it comes, it's a string. And the way that you do that, the way that you do the string is you slip the line through it like this. All right. You take this, you pull it off that direction, get rid of that. And then you take this line this yarn and you cinch it down real good and tight cut off I trim off the tag ends after I got it nice and cinched down and I'll try to do that two or three times just to make sure and then I'll take some clippers okay both ends and you can reel that right up into your reel if you need to. It'll go through your eye guides and you can move it up and down. Okay? So y'all see how that works. With a bobber stopper, it comes on a little bit of wire and there's a little loop at the end of the wire with the bobber stopper on. You put the line through this little hole. All right, then you take the bobber stopper. You see how I got it here. Then you take the bobber stopper and you just pull it across that hole. You keep pulling it until it breaks loose. Now, this is on my line. Okay, same deal. Slides up and down the line. Just like that other one. You can use either kind that you want to use. They both work fine. I've used them both. Now, I like to use a bead. Next, I'll just put on a little glass bead. So I put on my glass bead. The glass bead will stop where the bobber stopper is. All right, then I put on my float. This is a one ounce. I want a one ounce. That's my one ounce float. I know I'm going to need a one ounce weight. All right, so let's string this. through here. Now, if you're out on the water and your line has gotten wet, it's a lot harder to run it through these floats. This is 30 pound test line that I've got on here. All right, the next thing I like to have on there is a little bead through there. Okay, so what we got so far Bobber stopper, a bead, a float, and a bead. All right, now the next thing I do is, is what's a little different than what a lot of people do. Um, and I do it for a reason. I take my line and I double it over. All right? And then I take it and I double it again. Like that. All right, then I tie just a granny knot with those two loops in that line and I cinch it down. So I've got two loops here, okay? Now, I also want a knot that's big enough that this can't go past the knot, all right? I don't want my bead to go past that knot. So what I'll do now is I'll take my, the rest of the line that I got that's loose, um, you know, and I'll, I might take it 
and I just tie a bunch more knots. Like I'll take these, this loop right here, this extra, and I'll take it, and I'll tie a granny knot with it. Cinch it down. I'm just making this knot bigger and bigger. All right, then I'll take it again. And I'll tie a granny knot again. All right, now that's a pretty big knot. Nothing fancy, just a big knot. And I cut off these tags. Okay. Now, that way, this knot, this bead, cannot go past that knot. It stops. I take my ounce weight and I take these two loops that I've got here. They're the same, the same uh, size, and I slip them. Pinch them down, slip them through there, like that. I open up the loops, and I put the sinker through it like that. That way, if I ever want to change sinkers, all I got to do is loosen this up like that and take it off. All right, then I just tie on my leader. And I usually use about, I think this is about maybe 20 pound or 15 pound. Then I just tie on my leader. And I just use just an improved clinch knot. Then I give myself about at least a couple of feet maybe. Then I put on my hook. And for float rig fishing, I like to use a one-aught kale hook with my shrimp. I want something light so that the shrimp can, you know, swim around, look natural. But here's the deal. I do not want to lose anything from here up. I don't want to lose that float. That float is expensive. So... I've got 30 pound leader. I've got it double lined. This is not going to break. This will not break. This will break. That's what I want to break. That's why I set it up like that. That's why I have not lost, uh, or I rarely, rarely use a, lose a float. The basic idea is this, all right? This float with this sinker is gonna sit straight up and down in the water. Uh, if I want the float to be two feet, or let's say a foot and a half underwater, I will move this bobber stop up. And when this goes in the water, what's gonna happen is this floats up and it stops at the surface with this bobber stop. The rest of this is gonna be this far underwater, okay? And then, I've got the leader with the shrimp on it and it's going through the water in the current and this is tagging along behind. So that's why this knot and all this stuff doesn't matter. The fish don't see this. They see this and then they see this go through and they see a shrimp. Okay. So you got all this distance before the shrimp gets there. So the idea is you want this float to be on the bottom, touching the bottom and floating along and dragging this shrimp. Sometimes you want it as shallow as you can get it, you know, where the where the line is, is only that far under the water. You know, sometimes you may want it 10 or 15 feet. And you can do that with this with this adjustable um, this adjustable bobber stopper. You, you need to be willing and able to adjust. You need to understand that sometimes that current down here is gonna be flying. It's just going to be smoking. And um, the lighter, like if I put on a half ounce uh, weight and a half ounce float, and that current's going real fast, what's going to happen is 
uh, that float as it's going through the water is going to be turned sideways and my weight's going to be like that because the water's moving so fast the weight can't sink. The water's too fast. So I have to use something a little heavier so that the weight will sink. Yeah, so usually what I do is I try to get an idea of what the current's going to be like that day. There's all kind of apps and stuff that you can do. And I try to have at least two different floats tied on. I have a float that's for the little faster current, like this one. Generally, most currents are one ounce. You know, you'll be, it'll work. And then I may have one like this size on, a small one, uh, or maybe even as light as a quarter, little quarter ounce float. Um, and it's all dependent on the current. How fast is the current? Uh, and I want to use the smallest one I can get away with. The reason I figured this out is because when I watched the videos, you know, from other people, they just told you, they didn't say anything about changing the size of the weights, changing the size of the floats, anything like that. They just said, you put your rig, it didn't really matter, and put, and, and fish it. That, that's not, what I, what I discovered is like, there would be times when I would be fishing with the friend that I fish with all the time, Paul, and um, he was a crappie fisherman. And so I had learned about these float rigs and I was using the float rig the way I had learned how to do it with the two ounce weight and the two ounce float, you know, on the big heavy rig. And he's using these little bitty light floats and little bitty light weights and little bitty light hooks. And there would be a time during the day usually where he would catch fish and I wouldn't. And then there would be a time during the day where I would catch fish and he wouldn't. And the basic rig was the same. It was a bobber stopper, a float, a weight, and a hook and a leader. But the, the, the only thing that was different was the weight. And I started figuring out that there were times during the day when that current slows way down that I need a lighter, um, I need a lighter weight. And it just changes the presentation, you know, what those fish see. Do not be afraid to adjust that. Now, number five, tip number five, pay attention. Pay attention to everything this float does because... What I do usually is I will start off shallow and then I'll start adjusting this bobber until I find the depth that those trout want. Uh, lately, they've been as deep as 10 feet of water. So I have to just keep pulling this, you know, this bobber stopper up and up and up the line until I find the depth that I want. So you may have 10 feet different difference between where this float is. You know, this float maybe 10 feet up on the surface away from this, 10 feet down on the bottom. But I want this weight touching the bottom, just barely touching the bottom. So when I'm watching my float, I don't want to see my float just laid over. If I see my float just laid over and not moving, it's, on the, it's just laying on the bottom. And what's happening is this is laying on the bottom, the current's pulling this float, and it's just stuck there. If I see this float, uh, like it's going along and all of a sudden it just, like it just pops up out of the, you know, like it pops up out of the water, it pops up, <laughs> something's hit it. Uh, obviously if I see it, uh, go under, you know, start reeling. Uh, if I see it just like there's a lot of current and it just stops, but it stays straight up and down and it just stops for no reason. Why is it stopping? You probably got a fish on there. Start reeling. Uh, anything this float does that's weird, you know, there's a fish down there and he's, he's you know, on your shrimp. You need to start reeling. Uh, I don't want a bunch of line out there all looped out all over the place. Uh, I want my line pretty tight between me and the float uh, so I'm in touch with it. And that way I don't have to reel a whole bunch to catch up a bunch of slack to get to the float. So pay attention to your line. Keep your line as tight as you can. What I have to do a lot of times, the reason I like a um, uh, a bait caster is that I can just open this bail up and the line just flows out. It just keeps going. I don't have to do anything except sit, except sit here and hold it with my thumb and let it just keep going and keep going and keep going and keep going. I just watch it drifting in the current. Uh, and that I can use my thumb if I want to slow it down or if I want to stop it and pop it loose or something like that. I just keep my thumb on that bail and I control. I can let that float just float naturally with the current. Now, sometimes if I'm using a real light, um, 
a really light float, I might be using a spinning reel. And a lot of people like to use spinning reels. Uh, and then some people will tell you, you can't use a spinning reel with a float rig. Well, sure you can, you can use it. Uh, what I do when I'm using a spinning reel is I'll cast it out and I'll let the line kind of get tight and let it float in the current and I'll have my bell open. And what I'll do is I'll sit here with this hand and I'll kind of control the amount of line that I'm letting out. And if my line's getting a bunch of slack in it, I'll uh, put my thumb or my finger on it and kind of hold it and, and let it let the line straighten up a little bit. And this is, this is tip number six. Uh, you need to have the right reels and rods. You need to have a reel that is pretty fast. Uh, you need at least like a 6.3 or higher uh, ratio because you've got a lot of line out. There'll be times when I catch fish, you know, 70, 80, 100 yards down away from where I'm fishing. That's why I like these floats. I can see them a long way. So I may have let that thing drift a long, 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 long way and I'll see it go down and now I've got all this line I gotta take up and I gotta take it up in a hurry. I wanna have a rod that is long, at least a seven foot, seven and a half foot rod because I gotta take up all that line and that helps me take up the line. The other thing I wanna have with a rod is I want a light or medium rod. I don't want a real stiff rod because that current, remember that current's going really fast and trout have soft mouths. And if I'm reeling that trout in for 80 yards and I'm reeling it against a strong current, that's a lot of pressure on that fish. So I don't want my rod to be so stiff that it's gonna tear a hole in the, in the trout get off. I need uh, a rod that's limber, that has some give in it because my line does not have give in it. I'm using braided line. Um, and that's not gonna give. So I need something to give, it's the pole. So that's your six tips. Um, and you can go back and watch some of my videos and see the kind of places that I, cause I float rig fish. I have been float rig fishing almost exclusively for the last year and a half, learning as much as I can learn, trying all the places I can try. But float rig fishing is something that you can't just like tie on one you know, thing on one rod and just throw it out there and do it the same way every time and expect to catch fish every time. You gotta change things up, give yourself the best chance of success. Hopefully you picked up at least one thing maybe you hadn't thought of or one thing that you haven't heard uh, that could help you catch more fish. I'm very glad that I didn't go down here and just listen to one person and do this one way. I'm glad that I experimented. I'm glad that I watched people and I'm glad that I paid attention to what other people were doing. So. Hope that helps somebody out there. You guys have a good day.